I thought I would start actually with a poem that's not mine. Uh, I it was it was very windy yesterday. It's con continued into today, and it put in it put to mind uh, a poem by a nineteenth um, century uh, Russian poet named Afanasy Fiat, uh, whom I suppose most of you don't know, and you have no reason to know unless you've studied nineteenth uh, century Russian poetry. Uh, but um, but he he's a he's a, a marvelous uh, poet by turns um, sulky and sly, and uh, and he has a wonderful poem about uh, the kind of weather we're, we were having yesterday and and today, uh, in which two people are uh, steadily not having a fight with each other, uh, and the the weather seems to be saying everything that they're not saying. Uh, uh, to each other, which I guess in the 19th century Russia is, you know, what you could do in the evening. Okay, you know, like, look, honey, what's on? It's you pissed at me again. Uh, it's the only show. Uh, it's a short poem. It's only 12 lines, so I figured I would actually just, I would read it uh, first in Russian and then uh, then read the translation. Шумела полночная вьюга в лесной глухой стороне. Мы сели с ней друг подли друга, Валежник свистал на огне, И наших двух тени громады Лежали на красном полу, А в сердце не искры от рады, И нечем прогнать эту мглу. Берез искрипят за стеною, Сук ели трещит смолной, О, друг мой, скажи, что с тобою? Я знаю давно, что со мной. At midnight, the gale was all bluster in the treetops and distant church spires. We faced, she and I, one another. The branches were shrill on the fire. Our reddening shadows grew longer, spread out on the floor of the room. Yet in our hearts, no spark of ardor, no way of evicting this gloom. The birches outside tear like tissue, hot tar, in the bow stirs the tree. <clears throat> Dear friend, won't you say, what is with you? All my life I've known what's with me. All of my poems are, are similarly, the, I can't get, I'm, I've recently realized how gloomy this whole book is, uh, but uh, I, I thought I would start with a poem I, I don't um, really read very often, but just because um, Aaron began with a poem by uh, a, a New England poet named Peter Richards, uh, who's an old friend of mine. Uh, I, I do have a poem in this book that is written with Peter in, in mind, uh, called The Seven Bridges of Königsberg. So then, as I was crossing the bridge of no return, which most tourists take last, Peter says he just saw the cops arrest the mayor for trying to burn down the bridge between divinity and toys with its historical statuary of tickle me God, of glow bright God, of God with the goggly eyes. All part of the kickbacks against blasphemy campaign, which Peter supports, he tells me, though it's hard to tell if he's being serious or if he's thought about it seriously. Meanwhile, we're approaching the bridge they named the Pirate Census in honor of the 200th anniversary of the War on Adventure, which continues to be much more successful than it sounds, or so they say. On the bridge called the Marketplace of Displeasure, I compare my fear of airports to the cancer that killed a friend's friend whom I did not know well. There must be thousands of us, each of us looping back by a different route. I keep seeing the same faces only slightly changed by what they've been through. You know, I say, with a dispassion I once thought worthwhile, this next one is where my ex told me I put the ax in accident, so I'll call this bridge dispassion. It's near the bridge of politics, where it is fashionable to believe that nothing is getting done, or the bridge of fashion, which is inadvisable in a flood. This is fun, Peter says trying to find a path that crosses each bridge once and only once, though it never works, on the missing bridge where you cannot bargain. It's 
poem is in four short, short parts. It's called The Four Great Inventions of Ancient China. Paper. We might as well be talking about ceramics. In the race to build a more perfect fire, the team with the stronger heat shield wins. I used to think our orders weren't worth the paper they're written on, but then I turned page after page across millennia, only to say I could now walk into fire as if to a wedding. Compass. Just now, we were in Rome, and now we're in Zhenzheng province. Without the compass, this would not be possible. Experienced woodsmen carry two compasses. People lost in the wilderness often come to distrust the one they love. A strong argument for polytheism. To whom do I report the driver's unattended baggage, his suspicious behavior? Greetings, I say, to the last resplendent soul to leave what had been this town. Gunpowder. I won't stick my chest out before someone else's firing squad just so history might say I passed that test. That's no way to live. Gunpowder speaks for itself. To be alive at this party, you have to be conscious of your breath. I am party conscious, and you are not. Thank goodness we are both breathing. My arm cast across the bed and over your body, and I am waiting to be told what it is I feel under my arm, a tap-tap not unlike the near hopeless rhythm of someone signaling from beneath infinite rubble. It may be my heart, it may be your heart. There is infinite rubble on the news. There are infinite contexts in which an open heart is not nearly a good thing, contexts I do not nearly wish to name. Printing. The diagram of a Siamese standpipe, the red scare quotes, the boy's book of the sea, the pay dirt, the way a semicolon looks like a comma with a very small idea, the way that man from Shanghai seems to know everything about flowering trees. I too wish to know everything about flowering trees. This poem is called Philo on the Indestructibility of the Universe. All these computers sure take the fun out of rocketing through space. Every point in the universe, a kind of eye observing Earth, though it's the steel and glass eyes dotting the Earth that we call observatories. But that was like two lives ago. And even then, we thought we lived in the best of all possible worlds and prayed to angels to save us from the angels under the bed or around the corner with their long blades and undemocratic values. Though, all I really know for certain about my ancestors is that they felt about Babylon roughly the same way I feel about Cincinnati. The soul being a city, but not a city like this or a city you're in, but a city in you, in which there are many bustling theaters and some people applaud afterward to register their gratitude and others during as a sign of their pleasure. I wanted to read a couple of poems. I'll, I'll read one now and maybe one in, in a few minutes um, from this book, uh, which came out not that long ago. It's called Lodgings, uh, and uh, the translations of a Polish poet uh, uh, named Andrzej Sosnowski. I'll just call, tell you it's called Lodgings, so I don't have to spell his name. Uh, but um, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a book, uh, it's a poet and a book that, um, that have meant uh, a lot to me. Um, that always sounds so stupid to say, but it's true. Uh, means a lot to me. Um, of course, my reading the poem depends on my finding the poem. There we are. A Song for Europe. A rainbow? 
40 years since anyone's seen one, which means the end of the world or something like that. Don't hunker in a bunker. When love is most literally a magic that divides life into pleasure and loss, as a mermaid trims memory before the air raid of reminiscence, we are in Germany on the border with France. A dream arises about intercontinental war. The nocturnal emissions of factories, embers, dissonance, and the style of this history is so elusive, you have to drive the poem down this track, then that one, if it's to make it into the hands of its unknown addressee. It was never like that. Yes, it was. Will you be? A strange tryst, the emerald around your neck and the shadow on your eyes, a smile or a black armband for the passing of a word, an emerald that you might not stare into the death within you, that the poem might approach you like a shadow and cover your eyes, this poem, a shadow cast over truth from the depths of a tear, a splinter of light, the spot of glass that concludes the conversation of broken mirrors. Be this glass when it's all over, in the silence of all clear. Weren't we cruel, embarking so lightly on this dark life not a word when you pulled the ground out from under me and the sky broke down in snow. Love is not this word nor any other. The poem declares it like Blitzkrieg. Since Easter is upon us, or has been, uh, these are two paired poems that r reflect or depict in their way. Uh, the Annunciation, which you, you, many of you know, is the um, episode in which the angel appears to Mary uh, in order to infuse her with the Holy Spirit. Uh, diptych of the Annunciation left panel. I am a celebrity. People I do not know put words in my mouth, take my picture. And still I am not untouched by beauty, the hollow bones of birds and horses, hair tied back with hair. And still I am not free from worry, the terror of the special train or that look in the eyes of men who aggressively beg each other for change. I say that I have no pockets just to shut them up, but it's not true. Deep within the folds of my being, I'm carrying an urgent message. I'd pay attention if I were you. Diptych of the Annunciation, right panel. I feel that I will be witness to a magnificent slight, the bird in flight shot through the skull, the girl sawed in half, the trap door, the Egyptian gambit. I'm clever and no sophistry enough not to divorce it from consequence. Should I die, may they see by my book that my life was liberated, that even after the car chases and intrigues, the pistol shaped like a fountain pen, I remain more than a story to be told. Sweet errand, our sight lines tell me that we are already one. This next poem is called Xenophon on how to be a good cavalry commander, which is something we should all be aware of, right? First, sometimes different places have the same name, but being faster is not the same as having more time. There is never more time. Sometimes it is better not to hold out for the better ending, your horse is still the shortest distance to the ground of any future metaphysics. You cannot leave home without it, so take on nothing extra, no taboos, no shoes, no more contracts translating garbage for money. Then, weather permitting, you'll be a god, and every movement will follow the plan, and everything will be okay, even if no one has checked the references of the legions you wish to employ. Most are already dead anyway, 
and each has a shift, and the shifts overlap, so that cycling through the night, hands never stop reaching toward shoulders of enemies or friends. One fine morning, you just wake up, and it's your turn. Uh, I'm just going to read a couple more. Um, that's, the, that's the obligatory two-poem warning. Uh, one more from uh, Andrzej Sosnowski's book, Lodgings. Uh, it's also a kind of love poem called Love as a Catastrophe on the South Seas. Good thing you found that black puddle by the forest. There you have a basin of sky for beautiful ships sailing the shadow line from eye to eye. Your eyes will do. And if anyone says that, bent over them with a smile fit for a king, we are so poor, so what? We have nothing but the sand hardening along the length of my ships as they glide across the path from sea to sea, like discovery, like adventure, like that vessel of La Perouse's, your salty braids guarding the water's edge. And the eczema on the sky's skin before twilight's assault is so gray, and that day, a memorial and heavy like laundry on the line, come, I have something to show you. You'll see that sky as it falls on the orchard, the twilight fizzing in the apple trees, and like a golden beetle, the moon wishes it could alight on your hair, but first it needs to light up off the spark from the sun's horseshoe as it jumps the water, water hazard. It gets me so very excited, these pictures, archipelagos, Santa Cruz, the Sandwich Islands. Who, after a fall, doesn't feel like a line gone dead as the sky keeps us waiting and waiting? And those flashes in your pupils, is it my hair spread out on the sand that's illumined them so from both sides? Or is it blood? Oh, if I were to visit those parts more often, I'd seek new passages. I'd dream of vacations in the country and write of women who need not see things otherwise. And one more poem from the politics. Seneca on anger. God, how I hate when the senators speak. Every time I read this poem, that line kind of says like, yes, I do. I really do hate when the senators speak. <laughs> it's nice to realize you wrote something that you actually believe. Um, Seneca on anger. God, how I hate when the senators speak. When I indulge the sensorium to see what goes down, mine is an ire to strip the heavens bare. Luck has nothing to do with good. Anyone who believes otherwise should take my course on providence and then still be sent to the Colosseum, where I will not, I will not come to the aid of visionaries in need. The sky rent the crowds cheering the kind of scene only an asshole thinks he can imagine without enjoying. Let these suffice as the keystones of my charm. For I am the Athens that gave birth to Socrates, and I am the Athens that put him to death. Thank you very much.